What? The bank, yes. The vault popped open like a muffin. And the police? They were too fast for me to get clear away, so we proceeded with the other plan. It's all right. Come on, get away. It's an outrage. One lone bandage flashes in and out of here before you know it. Now, all I want to know is that... I know, I know. I've had a report. Join the cordon, officer. Yes, sir. I'm Nielsen of the yard. This is Inspector De Dennis. We're taking charge. Well, you're a bit late. The bandit's gone. Got away with 10,000 pounds of the bank's money. Well, he can't get far. Speed plan completed? Yes, sir. One minute after the alarm, our cars establish a cordon around the entire district. Good. Our man must be inside that line. The net will close at the rate of one square an hour. Our fish can't possibly wriggle out of it. But suppose Mr. Barrows finds you. He'll know you're not one of his men. I'll say I'm taking your place because you're ill. But suppose the police come here. Suppose... What if they do? I'm ready for them. Mr. Armitage, it's... It's an education to work with a man like you. <laughs> I'll put it. On the 10th, sweetheart. And how long is that? Three <coughs> days? Three days, sweetheart. Well, you don't forget it, because if you do... Oh, Phyllis, you wouldn't marry that flight Aldergood, would you? You. I want to marry you more than anything else in the oh, world. I knew you were only puffing about Aldergood. But I promised to marry Mr. Aldergood on the 11th. If you don't take me on the 10th, it's your last chance, Hugh Drummond, so help me. The only chance I'll ever need, darling. Hey! Hey! What are you two after? Suicide. You! You! Come on. So, uh, darling, now, what's the problem? First, we'll go and see what the decorators are doing to our new home. Right. That's Nielsen's car. Well, what if it is? Well, didn't you see him wave at me? He needs me. Well, he'd never forgive me if I left him in the lurch, Phyllis. I'll be back in a jiffy. In half a jiffy. Don't hurry back on my account. You, you. Hey, fishy, fishy in the brook. Papa catch him with a hook. How's fishing, Inspector? Don't call me Inspector. Oh, how did you get here? Well, Colonel, I was having a little look see at my new flat, and what did I hear but police cars? Hey, oh. Isn't a bank robbery on my hands enough without having you in my hair and under my feet and between my teeth? Well, now, Colonel, after all I've done for Scotland Yard. After all you've done? Look here, sir. What's that? <laughs> oh, me? Well, that's a new one, but we won't discuss that now. Kill. Go home, you young scamp. Please go home. Or go and marry that lovely girl of yours, and don't please come meddling in my affairs. Why, Colonel, I wouldn't bother with a simple bank robbery because... Well, because what? Well, because it might just possibly be a case. Just possibly, mind you, oh. a case that you could solve for yourself. Thank you. That's all right. Good luck, Inspector. You need it. the drawing room. Such a soft, cream color. Everything in the modern mode, madam. Yes, yes. Do you see what I see? What's the meaning of this? You'll pay for this, my man. I don't remember you. Ah, but you will. The world will remember me as a man who had courage. Courage to rebel against the everlasting monotony of white walls. Dead, flat, dull walls. A man can only go on painting white walls for so long. And then, pssst, something snaps. Come closer. Come closer. 
You see what I'm doing? I express the human form divine, not in the vulgar terms of flesh and skin and hair, but as kitchenware. <laughs> Notice how a cooking pot represents the heart. essence of we'll a send an ambulance. place. More than art is dead. This is the art of tomorrow. Kitchenware, that's the secret. A pot for a face, a skillet for a body, knives for fingers. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. Oh. I say, is Phyllis, uh, I mean, Miss Clavering about? I am Algy Longworth, and, and she promised to meet me here. I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Longworth. Yeah. Miss Clavering, is she the pretty girl with the green hair and the purple face? Yes, sir. What? She was here. She went away. They all go away! They won't look at my painting. Ah, but you... You are an intelligent man. You can appreciate real art when you see it. Look, isn't she lovely? Notice the delightful curves of the pot face. By all means, yeah. You like it? You really like it? Terrific. You're not just saying that. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you pardon me, I'll be uh, popping, old boy. You don't like my painting. I should have known that a man would wear that tie with that suit would have no color sense at all. Look at yourself in the mirror. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Now look at yourself in the mirror! Just a moment, listen! Now oh. look at yourself in the mirror! Oh, this is too much! Too much? Not enough! No. Oh! Now look at yourself in the mirror! A masterpiece! <laughs> oh, so you're still against me! Huh? Like all the others, eh? Occupational mm. disease, mania, oh. delusions, followed by spasms and coma. And then? Oh, they usually come out of it in time. It's a good thing you nabbed him before he did any real damage. What do you mean, before he did any real damage? What's happened here? One of the painters went balmy, sir. Yes. Oh, my sacred aunt, I might have known it. If there's trouble happening anywhere, you'll be there. <laughs> I'm sorry, Colonel. No, you're not sorry. You're only sorry when you miss something. Well, you're going to miss something now. Get out. But you can't throw me out, Colonel. No, really, why not? Because this is my flat. Our flat, darling. Yes, our flat, Colonel. Did you catch the bank robber? Bank robber? You was there? Ask the Colonel. No, we haven't got him yet, but he can't possibly get through our lines. Every house in the whole area will be searched. We'll have him before nightfall. How much did he get from the bank? Matty said about 10,000 pounds. Colonel, maybe I can... Oh, maybe, maybe you, you Colonel. Can... What? You're coming with me, Hugh Drummond. You want me to miss my train? Are you going to France today, Phyllis? Yes, I'm joining Aunt Blanche. Hey, darling, will you do me a favor? Take him with you. <laughs> He'll be over for the wedding on the 10th. I hope you're coming, Colonel. Well, if you're perfectly certain it's going to take place, I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> if he fails me this time, I'm going to marry Mr. Aldergate. Serve him right if he did. Wouldn't it just? Yeah. Come on, Hugh. <laughs> oh, oh, just a moment. You'll need a pass to get through the lines. I'm afraid you can't get through with that one. Here she goes. Uh, how long is this... Uh painter been in your employ, Mr. Barrows? I, uh, I'm not quite sure. Oh, some time, I believe. 
Have you ever noticed anything unusual about his conduct? No, no, I can't say I have. If there's anything I can do for him, Inspector, I'll be very glad to oblige if you'll let me know where he is. I'm sure he'll be grateful. Thank you, Mr. Barrows. You'd better have one too, Phyllis. There you are, my dear. Thank you. A oh, sad case, Captain Dunham, very sad. I assure you every trace of his ridiculous work will be removed. Thank you, Mr. Barrows. Good day, Captain. Good day. Oh, here, wait. Don't leave me like this, Joe. the bank robber yet, Constable? Not yet, but he can't get away. Ah. Stand back, stand back, please. stand back. Line up for inspection, please. Everybody must be inspected. Ah. All right. Beg pardon, sir, but I've had orders to stop all cars from leaving this area. There's been a bit of a bank robbery, sir. No. Oh, you see. Oh, oh, but in your case, sir, I know it's just a bit of formality. But I've had orders to stop everybody, absolutely everybody. I'm sorry, sir, but this boss is just for the young lady. Would you mind waiting here a few moments, Captain Drummond? Tenny? Ah, catch. Very good, sir. I presume you've got Miss Phyllis to the train on time, sir. But just, Tenny. And would you believe at the last minute she didn't want to go? She didn't think I was fit to be trusted alone in London. <clears throat> What's the matter, Tenny? Nothing, sir. I love the spring because spring loves me. I forgot to tell you, sir, we have a visitor. Yes, Mr. Longworth. Precisely, sir. War paint and all? No, sir. I lent him uh, one of my suits, sir. Why, Tenny, I didn't know you had another suit. Well, for special occasions, sir, a new grey one. I see. Tillyblend, sir. Oh. Algy. Here, old boy. Oh, what a day, what a day. Little did I know, little did I dream when I popped in on your new flat. Well, keep a stiff upper lip, old boy, because we're popping right back there. Or well, anything you say, old boy, but... What? Yeah, it's from Phyllis. Please go to new flat, get portable radio set, and send Air Express, and make sure you aren't getting into more trouble. Yours until the tent, love, Phyllis. Well, I don't see why we have to go. Why can't Tenny go? I beg your pardon, sir. I should be very happy to attend to the matter. Now, see, this chap Barrows is up to something. It sticks out like a sore thumb, and this is a good excuse to have another look at him. Oh, but you know, boy, I was on my way home, really. Now, nonsense, Algy. Don't worry about that painter. He's safe under lock and key. Tell him my hat. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Well? Not a trace, sir. Absolutely nothing. No, oh, but hang it all, man. He couldn't get away. Well, we've tried everything, sir. The basements, attics, even the housetops. I can't see how any criminal could get through a cordon like that with his loot under his arm. Well, he's a smart one, and that's a fact. Yeah. Home Secretary's just had me on the phone. The usual thing, questions, questions. Tomorrow the press will be doing the same thing. Have we any clues? When may we expect an arrest? What do the police propose to do? I don't quite know, sir. Neither do I. I wonder what young Drummer would do. I beg pardon. Can I say anything? I don't think so, sir. All right, Tony. Bring some clothes? Sure. In the car. Come on, not so fast. If you want to get anywhere in this business, you must learn not to leave anything behind. Well, you left the money. <laughs> Safely hidden, my boy. When the police go... They've gone already. All right. Good. Come on. Any news? I thought you should know, sir. That painter who went mad, he escaped from the hospital. Oh, he's probably gone straight back to his own home. We thought he'd do that, sir, but you see, he gave a false address. He what? He gave a false address in Peckham. They've never heard of him out there. Good Dennis, I'm beginning to see daylight. Oh, what a fool I've been. What is it? Why, that painter. Why couldn't he be the very man we're looking for? 
right out from under our very noses. But the manager, what's his name? Barrows. Barrows. Yes, I think I'll go and have a talk with Mr. Barrows. And when I get through with him, I think we'll know a little more about our bank robber. painter himself. Recovered quickly, didn't you? As a matter of fact, I was expecting you, but not quite so soon. Is this where you hid it? In the radio? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do, Mr. Bank Robber. No tricks? Well, why don't you call the police? Why? Oh, we really don't need them, do we? Let me see now. 10,000 pounds, wasn't it? Or didn't you have time to count it? I see. A split. Huh? You couldn't stop me if I took all of it. But I'll be generous. 50-50, agreed? You're a smart man, Mr. Burroughs. Oh, you're pretty smart yourself. You know it takes brains to do what you did today. You better turn off that light. The police know this flat's not occupied. <laughs> Blow a tire? There's no blowout, Elsie. That was a shot inside somewhere. Come on, we're going in. You stay here, Tenny. Oh, Something's up, Elsie. Come on. Now here, soap. Where's the flashlight? Huh? I thought you had it, Hugh. Oh. Must be a light switch around here somewhere. Nothing here, Hugh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Up, All right, old boy. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I got him, old boy. I got him. Oh. Uh, Elsie, get him! Oh. He's gone, hasn't he? Yes, Elsie. Captain Drummond. In here, Tenny. Tenny, did you see a man escaping? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you do something? Because he did it first, sir. Well, you're not the only one, Tenny. Uh, Elsie, do you suppose he could have fired that shot we heard? Well, what would he be firing at? There was nobody here. Well, let's have a look. Uh, do, you, do you think he's coming back? Elsie, be sure you tie his ankles this time. We've made a mistake. Yes, Elsie's right, Colonel. You see, we we we, 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 we thought you were somebody else. Yes. A natural mistake, sir, under the circumstances. Yes, you see, Colonel, we didn't expect you. We I didn't expect me. No. Well, no. well, who in blazes did you three hoodlums expect? Well, well, we we weren't, weren't quite sure. You see, we heard a pistol shot. What? And it, no, 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 no. We th thought we heard a pistol shot, but it wasn't. It was a, a, a backfire. I see. Yes, it's a backfire. Yes, you see, Colonel Phyllis wired me and asked me to come up here and get a radio set that she yeah. wanted. Yeah, and here it is, old boy. 
Marvelous invention, the radio. Great thing for shut-in. Yes, I'd like to see all three of you shut-in for six months at Hard Robot. Now, Colonel. Pardon me, sir. Your hat, sir. Thank you. Phew. Yes, Colonel. Uh, what's this about a shot? Shot? Oh, nothing, nothing. Something we heard, a tire blowing, perhaps. You know, sounds at night, you can't tell us. Yes, 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 but you rushed up here thinking you heard a shot, didn't you? Well, yes. And when you got here, you found everything quiet and peaceful. Perfectly quiet, Colonel. Yeah. Then what in the name of my sainted aunt Harriet is that? Ooh. Good heavens. Well, that's Barrows, the manager. Hill, that car you heard fires bullets through the heart. Radio for Miss Phyllis Cladarine. Merci, facteur. A bientôt, Thérèse. Find your man yet, Hugh? That's it, Colonel, but if he's here, I will. I know, I know. You think the bank robber, the painter, and your burglar are all one and the same man? No, oh, so did I last night. There's an old offender. He's quite capable of committing both robbery and murder. Name's Henry Armides. He's a dangerous customer. Oh, I'm sorry, Inspector. I don't recognize him. Well, you couldn't have had more than a glimpse of the man in your flat last night. You probably wouldn't recognize his picture. Oh, I'm positive, Colonel. His ugly mug was within an inch of my nose. Well, since you didn't see the painter, except with his face completely covered, we can't be sure they're the same even now. Uh, Colonel, the people at the hospital said that a man with lead poisoning couldn't get up for a week. And yet the painter was able to escape. And he wasn't suffering from lead poisoning. You know, they couldn't have been right in both cases, now could they? No, they couldn't, Colonel, but... No, 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 we've given your theory a fair trial, and we've nothing left to go on. Now, will Colonel, you... Let... Will you please go home, Hugh? Please go home. I, I've, I've got work to do. Good luck, Inspector. Oh, well, it's not in the bedroom, so it must be in here. Suppose Drummond comes home. <laughs> we'll take care of him if he does. Well, how could he hide a radio in there? <laughs> The money could have been taken out of the radio, my friend, and tacked to the bottom of the drawer. Well, if Drummond found the money, wouldn't he turn it into the police? Drummond's not such a fool. He likes money as well as we do. The main thing to remember in searching a room is that the unlikely places are the likeliest. When I was serving my apprenticeship, as you are now, I was sent to find a letter, a very important letter. I failed because I didn't realize it could have been pinned into the draperies. Maybe he carries it with him. Dargemont, France. Darling, thanks for sending radio. Don't wait until the 10th. What are you going to do? Go to Tashmat, of course. Wait. Are you leaving that message for Drummond to read? No, I, I'll tear it up, of course. Another thing. Captain Drummond must not go to Tashmat today or under 10. He might make trouble for us there. How can we stop him? Watch. On the desk, there's some fishing line. Get it. Observe, my friend, that this is trained on the door through which Drummond will enter. Yes, but I see. When Drummond opens the door, bingo. But suppose it gets the wrong person. <laughs> Another shooting in a Drummond flat will interest the police, I imagine. Captain Drummond will be so busy explaining, he couldn't give us much trouble for several days. Crime and... Mm. What's that? Blake has the fingerprints. Good, send him in. To Dennis, we're in luck. They've got fingerprints from the bank. Here are the fingerprints found in the London and Southminster bank, sir. Fingerprints of the bank robber? Definitely. These prints were taken from the handle of the paintbrush in Captain Drummond's flat. They're the same. And Drummond was right. 
The bandit did hide it in his flat. Good work, Blake. No, it's not all, sir. Look at these. Where'd you get these things? From our files. They're the prints of Henry Armides. They're the same as these others. Look, line for line. That's right. That's all, Blake. Drummond was right. He's been right all the time. Don't forget that you had that idea first, sir. I know that, only I hadn't sense enough to stick to it. Get me a picture of Armitage from our files. I want Drummond to identify it. And you only have one of the beard, and Drummond actually looked at well, that. Well, then paint the beard out, man. He'll recognize it quickly, then. I'll have him here in half an hour. Good. After you, Wellesley. Lights, Tony. Oh. Do you think that was meant for a joke? Joke, Elsie. The thing had been aimed a few inches lower, it'd be no joke. Uh, oh. Somebody's been here and deliberately and ransacked the place, sir, with a fine tooth comb. Why, Tony? First a new flat and now this. Who is he? What's he want? I don't know, sir. Let me see that. Tony, have we got any cables recently? No, sir. Perhaps it blew in through the window. Oh, nonsense. Elsie, the window's closed. What's the matter, old boy? Did you lose something? Looks like it, Algy. Thought perhaps they'd torn up the message, but they were too smart for that. Might be from Phyllis. Do you think, sir, that uh, a cable of ours has been intercepted by the enemy? Right, Tony. Then may I suggest, sir, uh, that we call up the telegraph office and have the message repeated? Brilliant idea, Tony. I rather like it, sir. Be careful, Algy. Oh. Hello. I want to repeat on the message. It wasn't quite clear. Yes, the name's Drummond. Hugh C. Drummond, number nine, Chesty Mansions. That's right. Yes, go ahead. All right, thank you. Well? It's from Phyllis, thanking me for the radio. Oh, it's a good thing it wasn't anything important. Important? But it was important, Elsie. Tenny! Yes, sir? Get my bags. I'm leaving town. Very good, sir. Well, what did you find out? Don't you understand, Algie? Everything checks. The bank robber, the mad painter. That's where he hid the money in the radio. And I sent it to Phyllis. Oh, where are we going? We. Yes, yeah, we all the way, old boy. Well, it's a Taj Mahal. I've got to get there before the enemy. We've just got time to catch the boat train, sir. Oh, it's too slow, Tony. We wouldn't get there till tomorrow night. I'm going by air. The three of us, sir? Why three? All for one and one for all, sir, as the saying goes. Very apt, Tony. I rather like it, sir. Hmm. I see trouble approaching, sir. Hello, Inspector. Afraid I can't stop to entertain you just now. <laughs> That's all right, Captain Drummond. I'm going to entertain you. Not arrested again? No, not exactly. We want you to look at some photographs. Oh, delighted, old chap. Tomorrow or the day after, not today. You're coming to the yard, Captain Drummond. Colonel Nielsen's orders. Well, I was going to take a plane. Ixte ithwe ine. I pray, oh, yea. You mind taking my car? It's quicker than the underground. Not at all, if you don't drive too fast. What did he say, sir? That is pig Latin, Tenny. He said, stick with me. Oh, my What's the matter? Is the tank empty? No, oh, there's plenty. Well, Tenny, did you get that new battery? Yes, sir. Oh, yay, I lay any day. Uh, no, sir. Get right, out and give us a push, will you? Well, come along. Aren't you going to give us a hand? Would you mind, Inspector? You know, one more shoulder to the wheel. No, very really well. <laughs> As they say in America, I think he put one over on you, old boy. Very, very, very clear. Oh, Guys, Inspector? Certainly not, and never mind how I look. Take a cable. Chief of Police, Taj Mahal, France. I'll give that Captain Drummond a joke from this office and see how he likes it. You ready? Yes, sir. Please hold young Englishman arriving tonight. About 5 feet 11 inches tall, about 170 pounds weight. 
small moustache. We believe him to be George Boyd, alias Henry Jones, a notorious international spy. This man will undoubtedly claim to be Hugh Drummond. If you apprehend him, notify Scotland Yard immediately and hold the criminal until further instructions from us. Regards. Give that to the partner signature. That ought to hold Captain Drummond for a while. Is that the house? Yes, but careful now. Why, this will be duck soup for me. Don't be too sure. The clevering girl would surely recognize me or I'd do it myself. Oh, I'll fool them all right. Yeah. Just in case you don't, you better take this. Now, uh, first, I'll say to them... This man says he's a customs inspector. Something about the radio. Oh. Um... Voulez-vous expliquer, uh, ce que c'est que vous désirez, monsieur? A thousand pardons, but it is my duty, madame. Oh, you speak English? Yes, uh, oui, oui, madame. That is why I am sent. Well, now, uh, what's this about the radio? She has not been paid for. The duty. I must confiscate. Oh, stop the nonsense. How dare you come here at this time of night disturbing respectable people? The duty? She has not been paid for. Oh, that's utterly ridiculous. Now, if there's been any mistake, it's not our fault. Tell me the amount and, and end this nonsense. Impossible. You know, you don't look like a Frenchman to me. You look more like an Englishman. A very low-class Englishman. I don't believe he understands half we say. Therese! Therese! Oui, Therese, will you please talk to this man? He says he's from the customs. Uh, oui, mademoiselle. Vous êtes envoyé par la douane, mon petit vieux, hein? Oh, oui, oui, madame. Mm -hmm. Alors, peut-être bien que vous connaissez là-bas mon cousin Louis, qui est employé aussi, hein? Louis? Oh, Louis! Oui, oui. Oh, c'est épatant, merveilleux, admirable. This man is an imposter. I knew it. Ah, he cannot even speak French. He's a thief trying to steal the radio. Shut up. Get back against the wall, all of you. Assassin, blackguard, I shall call for help. Then you'll be dead. Get Shut up, you. Allons, parlez. Stay back. Stay back. Keep a distance. Stay back, or you'll get it. Oui, oui, oui. Oui, oui. Tu m'as réglé encore plus. Marche. Gaston is a very old friend of mine, madame. Uh, sometimes he drops in for uh, uh, a little glass of wine. So. Driver, what's the matter? I'm in a hurry to get to Tajmo. But this is Tajman. We can go no further. The street, monsieur. Oh, let's see. Will you take my bags? Thank you. Ah, bonsoir, monsieur. One moment, monsieur. Monsieur Dupree. Listen, gentlemen. You will answer questions, please. Who are you and why have you come here? My name is Hugh Drummond, and I'm a British subject. I don't see why I should tell you anything. George Boyd, Elias Henry Jones. You will have to come with us. George who? We have a cave wanting us to look out for you, monsieur. But what for? Game's up, monsieur. There's a large reward for the capture of spies. Dead or alive? Yes, dead or alive. Now, look here, this is all nonsense. I want to see the chief of police. I am the chief of police, monsieur. Then I demand to see the mayor. I am also the mayor. Now, look here, my name is Hugh Drummond, and I'm not a spy. Now, if you'll cable Colonel Nielsen of Scotland Yard, why, he'll vouch for me. There will be no need for further talking. Take Monsieur Boyd away and see that he has accommodations worthy of such an honored guest.
goes in, you come out. This way, monsieur, please. How are you doing, mate? Well, nicely, thank you. That's the ticket. Keep it chin up. Right. And don't talk, no matter what they do to you, mate. They kept after me for hours, but I didn't talk. <laughs> Who's he? Another Englishman like you, but a much greater rascal. George Boyd, international spy. He is wanted in every city in Europe. And they say there is a hundred thousand francs reward for him, dead or alive. The great George Boyd. <sighs> How about getting a little beauty sleep, dear? What? Oh, I think I'll read a little while longer. Interesting book? Yes, very. Couldn't be the late news broadcast from London you're sitting up for, could it? <laughs> I'm not worrying about Hugh. If he gets himself into trouble, he'll have to get himself out. Oh, Auntie. Why hasn't he answered my cable asking him to come today instead of tomorrow? Well, you sent it yesterday. He's probably in Zanzibar by now, chasing some will-o'-the-wisp. Monsieur, you'll have to double up. We only have one cell. You sit there, Mr. Boyd. Hmm? Boyd? Oh, yes, of course, Boyd. Sure. I know all about you. Word goes around, you know. I'd be a pretty green one not to have heard about you and the big jobs you've pulled. A person like you, at the top of the profession, could teach a fellow like me a lot of tricks. Uh, you think so? Oh, I know how it is. You think I'm not worth bothering about. Well, maybe I'm not, Mr. Boyd, but the man I'm with, he's a big shot. Even you'd know his name if I told you. Yes, I imagine so. He won't let me stay in this rock no long. He needs me on a little job we we're going to do. Just like the one we did in London three days ago. Uh, when did you come to Taj Mahal? Yesterday. We'd be on our way back now. Only I had some bad luck. We'll do the job properly this time. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Well, what are you so cheerful about? Have you caught Armitage? <laughs> no, sir, not yet. But he has a cablegram from the French police. They hold a suspect in Taj Mahal. Holding George Boyd, alias Henry Jones, claims name is Hugh Drummond. Please advise immediately how much reward you offer and when you will arrive to extradite him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd see the joke on Drummond, giving me the slip and then getting nabbed. <laughs> The joke's on you, pray. Imagine anybody offering a reward for Drummond. Now, if they'd offer a reward to... This must be the house. Looks sort of Drummond-esque, don't you think, Tenny? If you say so, sir. Can you see two chimneys, old boy? No, sir. Don't you think it'd be better, sir, if we asked at the door? Perhaps you're right. Well, I hope we find the radio before Hugh gets here. He'll have no heart for the marriage if it's gone. For Miss Phyllis's sake, sir, we'd better not say a word about Captain Drummond being in jail. You can trust me, Tenny. I hope so, sir. Remember, sir, not a word about Captain Drummond. Oh, not a word. I'm Blanche. It's you. Oh. What a trip. What a... Uh, uh, he won't be long, Miss. Uh, no, uh, don't you worry, Phyllis. He'll be here soon. Colonel Nelson will get him out in no time at all. Of course, it was most unexpected, but he won't cause any real delay. We're, huh? Kenny, when you've removed your foot. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss. Would you mind telling me what Colonel Nielsen is getting him out of? <laughs> Jail, if I know Hugh Drummond. How did you guess? Uh, Tenny, is Captain Drummond in jail? Well, uh, you see, the. There has been a little uh, misunderstanding, Miss. Uh, just a, a temporary guest. Nothing serious. Bravo. Hugh Drummond adds another jail to his collection. Poor Hugh, he needs me. Well, where are you going? To the jail. Oh, Phyllis, I forgot. The radio. Where is it? I'm Blanche. The radio. The one that came from London. Where is it? Oh, that? It is gone. Gone? My guest or two kids to the jail. Do they, do they take everything to the jail? You fix him. Fix it. Fix it. Oh, he's probably got it all apart, operating on it. We go, sir. We may hit the time now.
Nazis English. Oh, mad. You tell me there is nothing really criminal about this young man, this Captain Drummond? Nothing, monsieur. In fact, he's been of considerable assistance to Scotland Yard in many cases. Then why? Because I want to teach him a lesson in behalf of a beautiful young lady who expects to marry him. Ah, a lady. Here, monsieur. Here, in your most beautiful village, she hopes to marry him tonight. It is not too cruel, this lesson of yours, to ask me to keep the bridegroom in jail while the young lady waits, perhaps weeping. Uh, that's just the point, monsieur. Many is the time he's kept her waiting, monsieur. Weeping and waiting, even at the church. The monster! Two monsters, monsieur! Bless you. But why? Why should he, should he see a crime committed? Even the last moment, he'll forget all about his fiancée, Monsieur Good chasing off about the criminal. Ah. <laughs> and it is to prevent such a thing this time that you ask me to keep him a prisoner. You said it. This time, I assure you, as mayor of Tarjuman, I will see that the beautiful lady is not disappointed. This heartless Captain Drummond will be forced to keep his vows. <clears throat> I, Jean-Philippe Louis Napoleon Dupre, mayor of Tarjuman, I will see that they marry. Splendid, Monsieur le Maire. It will be an honor for both. <laughs> Phyllis. Where's Hugh? He's perfectly safe, my dear. The mayor has promised to see that you are married. Ah, mademoiselle, you have come for Captain Drummond. He's here in Tarjuman's impregnable jail. Believe me, safe. For you, never again shall Mademoiselle weep for her truant lover. You shall be married uh, here at once. Here in jail? It's the only way you'll ever get him. The face <laughs> is right, my dear. There will be no failure this time. He is my prisoner. I release him only when he is your prisoner for life. Uh, this gentleman will act as witness. Attention, uh, the code civil, uh, summon the clerk of the court, order a guard of honor. Now look here, my man, there's been a mistake. I've got to get out of here. Now you, you'll, you'll pay for this, all of you, do you hear? Don't take it so hard, Mr. Boyd. Look what's here. Didn't I tell you Mr. Armitage wouldn't forget me? Well, well thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure to share with you, Mr. Boyd. <laughs> Hello? Oh, excuse me. News from home? News? Not half. Mr. Armitage says you should always swallow messages. Oh, yes, I believe it's the accepted practice everywhere. We must hurry. We've got to get out of here. We? I wouldn't leave you behind, Mr. Boyd. Well, at the risk of disturbing your admiration for my talents, I must confess I don't quite see how... You will. We've got a big job for tonight. We're going to get a fortune and blast every witness out of this world all at once. A bomb, eh? Half a dozen bombs planted where nobody suspects. Then? Yes, but I don't see how you expect to keep your appointment with Mr. Armides. I'll show you. Isn't that something? Set the catch, press this, and bingo. Amazing. And that's how he robbed the London and Southminster Bank, eh? Right. Nobody would think of looking for a bomb in one of these strict wine bottles. I guess those people will be surprised tonight, eh? Well, someone's due for a surprise. Now, tell me, how are you planning to get out of here? Just watch. We are both getting out of here right now. rather small, but such a strong wall. You wait. It's made so you can direct the explosion outward. Hey, Sen, we must not keep the lady waiting. Oh, ça plus vote, Monsieur le maire. Is the guard ready? We are ready. Hello, what's up? Let us go. This is a great day for Tarjon. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Mr. 
Let us go to the prisoner. All we have to do is to set the timer. That'll give us time to pack it between those stones. Give me a coat, sir. Won't this be a joke on the mayor? I hope we'll be in a condition to enjoy it. Almost believe he meant to strike while the iron's hot, monsieur. I will. Attention, Captain Drummond, you cannot escape again. My men surround you. You are to be married here now, this instant. Gladly, monsieur, but first. There's no first, monsieur. You cannot desert this beautiful young lady again. For shame, monsieur, to even think of it. Yes, you're perfectly right, monsieur. I'd be a fiend. But first, there's a radio of such importance that My even. Dear Lord, you don't you worry. That's quite all right. We are told, sir, the radio is quite safe here in the jail. What on earth are you talking about? Phyllis, is that right? That radio I sent you from London, is it here? Well, Gaston took it for evidence. Have it up here, monsieur. I have it. It's in there. Well, splendid. Phyllis, in that case, will you be an adorable, sweet, lovely little lady and let monsieur de Prey marry us? It's the nearest we've got to it yet. Carry on, monsieur. You mean you are prepared to surrender? Unconditionally. We await your benediction. Clerk of the court. Here, monsieur le maire. Prepare to read the marriage act. Le contrat de mariage est daté du 25 août. In conformity with the law, I am going to read chapter 6 of book 1 of the civil code. While I am reading, everybody is requested to stand up. Monsieur le maire, everybody is standing up. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. The married couple owe each other fidelity, help, and assistance. The husband must protect his wife. The wife must obey her husband. The husband is obliged to supply all the necessary means of living according to his possibility. What was that? Oh, no, no. He escaped again! Stop him! <laughs> He's enjoying himself. You! You! Don't stand there doing nothing. Help him! You shall not escape. Come with me. We'll marry him dead or alive! He's crazy, that man. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
So you tried to escape the fray, did you? But the man's a murderer. And what are you, scoundrel, that you tried to escape a beautiful woman? I have seen it with my own eyes. Hold him, mes enfants. We will resume the wedding service. Do you, you Sidriman, take this woman to this... Captain Drummond, the radio, sir. I say, Hugh, Hugh, old boy, this... Uh, what's this about? Don't be a fool, Hugh. Stay here and get married. That's Armandy's, the bank robber. What? Come on. Opposition. In the name of the law. Oh, never mind that now. Order your men to find Armandy's. The service will proceed. But the man's a robber. A murderer. Silence, monsieur. Do not interfere. We began this ceremony in the jail, but we'll finish it in your own home. Come on. But, madame... I'm her nearest relative. Do as I say, or I withdraw my consent to the ceremony. Very well, madame. Allons. <laughs> Now, monsieur, this time we finish. Put him there. Mademoiselle, you play. Madame, les gardes à la porte. Attention, we proceed. In the name of the law, I declare you see Dremon and Phyllis Clavering bound by Mary. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Kenny, they've done it at last. <laughs> Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> May I remind you, though? Oh, yes. What's that mean? End of the trail, Colonel. Good heavens! The London and Southminster Bank money. Exactly. Uh, now we are going to dream to the health and happiness of Mr. and Mrs. What do you call them? Oh, Bulldog Drummond. <laughs> Too late! You're mine! Darling, you all right? Yes. Well, we're really married, huh? A quiet wedding with a few intimate friends. <laughs> Won't all of it be sunk when he finds out? Well, there isn't any all of it. I made him up. You what? I made him up to make you jealous. Well, I'll be hanged. <laughs> Have a drink, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> 